SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from the guy and say, you know what, he's got your back, and you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's gonna be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Full practice, switch doctor, request immediate contact strike. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know him personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Can you smell it? Can you feel it? Well, it's in the air tonight. It is district playoff football on STSPN.com, and we are happy to be here at Snohomish's Veterans Memorial Stadium. I'm Mark Ockett with Scott Lego, Todd Elvig, and Jeff Matson here tonight as we are bringing it all to you all over the world, streaming live on STSPN.com. It is the Woodenville Falcons out of Kinko 4A against the Glacier Peak Grizzlies out of Wesco 4A. Tonight's broadcast presented by Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing for longer than we've been alive, which is saying something right there. So, hey, Scott, it's great to see you, man. We uh, haven't had a chance to work together yet this year, and we got a nice nugget uh, tossed our way uh, earlier this week. I was about to announce Husky Volleyball, and it was a big one against Stanford on uh, Sunday. I get a text, he said, would you like to do football on Friday night? I had to switch a couple things around. You get, had to get approval uh, to make sure it was okay on your schedule, your busy schedule, and boom, this came together. Now, when you couldn't make it the last time, it was because you were down in Eugene, if I remember correctly, 
and you were down to see the WSU Oregon game. Is that right? Yes. Uh, my stepson is the uh, special teams coordinator at Oregon, so uh, we've been going to a lot of Oregon games this year and uh, enjoying them, having a good year. He was at Penn State for several years before that. We'll yep. get to what uh, caused him to move and how he's enjoying it down there at Oregon later on in the broadcast. But right now we've got kickoff time, and it will be Glacier Peak as they uh, will uh, go ahead and kick off to start the game. They won the coin toss. They're going to be kicking off to start things off, and then they elected to receive to start the second half. All right, here we go. Are you ready? It is high school football district playoff time. Let's see who's going to state with the victor of this game. And there you go, the kickoff. Nice deep kick right there back to the 10-yard line and a quality return. And we'll get things started right there for the Woodenville Falcons. Woodenville, again, out of Kinko 4A. And that is a competitive division down there, a competitive league. And they, they do not have an RPI, but three other teams make that four other teams around them do. Yeah. But we all know how competitive it is there, as is Wesco. And Glacier Peak coming off a 40-point loss to Lake Stevens last week. Lake Stevens now ranked number one in the state. Glacier Peak ranked number four in the state in 4A. And here come the Woodenville Falcons as they are all set to go in their white uniforms on the tops and the jerseys. And it would be the green helmets as well as the green pants. There's a handoff straight up the middle. Check this run out. That's going to be trouble. And down the other direction right there for Woodenville with a huge gain that time was Chase Rudden. He's down, and, he's down 37. Yeah, that's right. He looked like he stepped out. Glacier Peak putting the heat on. But man, what a run that time for Chase Rudin. They'll have to bring it back, but still a huge gain. Yeah, no huddle offense. Quick feeling to the ball. So that is going to be a gain of... 38 yards, it's first down, the first first down of the game, so you get to mark one of those down to get things started. Woodenville's got to wake the way, oh, there's a reverse, look at this right here. And being pulled down is Carson Ackerman. Quarterback is Tyler Jones. He is a 6'2", junior, 200 pounds, good size for a high school player. And so it'll bring up second down. That was a gain of four yards that time. Ackerman sees the ball for the first time. Looks like a pass situation right here, and that's going to be into the hands of the intended receiver, Ryan Bowles. And he goes down just ahead of the 23-yard line, right about there, just a nose ahead of it. So that'll be a first down from the 37 to the 23, and that's a 14-yard gain. Yeah, Woodmelt's coming out with a lot of different formations here, which is maybe messing up uh, Glacier Peak a little bit. Yeah, we're seeing about everything here in this first stretch. Two first downs already. First down, 10 yards to go from the 23-yard line. And trying to make them be a little faked out that time, but getting the handoff was uh, Rudin. Yep. So Rudin gets a loss on that play. No, actually, one yard gain. He had the big run earlier of 38 yards. And now one yard, so 39 on two carries. And it'll be second down, nine yards to go as the ball is set down at the 25 yard line in a shotgun formation too wide to the right side. Oh, handoff again goes to Rudin, and he is stacked up. Loss on that one. Gonna take it all the way back to the 28-yard line, and it'll be third and 15 to go. All right, setting up once again. And Glacier Peak, what are you seeing there, Scott, as far as how their defense looks? They're a two-man front and a lot of basically a 5-2 look. All right, to the air, and that one's going to be too far 
and tending the ball downfield that time for Andy Henry was quarterback Tyler Jones. Henry's a 6'1", 185-pound senior, and that'll bring up fourth down, and there are ways out there. Yeah, they're going to go for it. So fourth and 15 in high school football, you get down here, even though you're 15, it's a whole different story than in the NFL or college football. Yeah, usually uh, the kicking a game is a little bit suspect always in high school. Yeah. Although every once in a while we'll see a big one blasted. Yep. Fourth down and a long 15 yards to go. The ball is set just outside the 28-yard line. Near hash mark to us. Man in motion. Uh, and there's a flag. Procedure. That'll be our first flag of the game. False start on 74. So Jeff Matson's here to help us out with picking up exactly where the infraction would be. And that false start is called against Alex Wenzel. Okay, here we go. So it's now fourth and 20. Five-yard penalty. Backs it up to the 33-yard oh. line. There's another one. Another little procedure play. So they're lined up in the neutral zone, and uh, therefore, back they go another five yards. Yeah. They're going to practically need to get to Pennsylvania to get <laughs> the first down. So here we go again. Fourth and 25. Can they stay clean this time? Oh, he's going to have a quick punt right there. Quarterback punting. Laid it out there pretty nice. Yeah. That's a good call. I was actually thinking that when I, uh, they lined it up. I thought quick kick would be a good idea here. So that will end the drive for Woodenville. And now Glacier Peak will go on offense. We'll take a quick break. 8.57 left to go. And we're going to get the word from the producer that we're going to keep it right here. You see on the screen, each team has three timeouts. It's still early. And uh, so we are just tickled as punch to be here, right? Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. like parachute punch that you would get at Airfield Espresso, one of our sponsors. <laughs> ah, you know, got to work them in while you can. And, and at times, we actually get free things brought up to us. They have actually done it last year when we were at Snohomish. Glacier Peak is ready to go. You got one out wide to each side. Now tucking in over on the left side a little bit more as the Grizzlies are led by quarterback River Lean. And there it is, just a little bit of a gain. They started out from the 13-yard line. Good pursuit by the uh, Falcons. Their head coach uh, is a defensive uh, kind of genius guy. Been so known you, for years. you know these Woodenville coaches pretty well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, been able to coach in both leagues, the, w, uh, the Wesco and Kinko. So Coach Maxwell is a good coach, good, does a good job. All right, one yard loss that time. Second down, 11 yards to go from the 12 yard line. Glacier Peak sets up with three wide and the ball at the near hash mark to us. That's going to be a keeper and no running room that time, really. Not a lot, just a couple of yards for River Lean. Got to like that name, River Lean. Yeah, that's marketable. Under eight minutes to go. Here in the first quarter, just getting underway at Snohomish's Veterans Memorial Stadium. Chance to do both the play-by-play -play games for football up here this year. That uh, feels pretty good. Nice to squeeze them in around volleyball, and I love volleyball too. Third down, nine yards to go. Ball at the 14-yard line. Lean looking to go to the air. He's got a man crossing the middle. I think he's got him. That is going to be a catch by Gabe Russell. So he finds Gabe Russell from the 14-yard line to the 40. That is a gain of 26 yards. And a first down for Glacier Peak, their first first down of the game. Yep. Great conversion on uh, third down. It's really fun to see great passing plays executed, Scott. Yeah. At this level, it's really a, it shows the hard work these guys put in and getting the timing down and everything. Well, I'm going to age myself when I say this, but I coached in the King, or the, the West Coast League when Terry Ennis was here, that's so what, we, we didn't see a lot of passing. That's what I was thinking, too. So the uh, set going towards us here on the screen and uh, with the football trying to get some running room is Gabe Russell. 
And it looks like Gabe got about four yards on the play. Every little bit helps as it's now going to be out to the 44-yard line and bring up a second down and six. Fair enough amount of routing plays here in this first quarter that we're at the 6.30 mark as the clock winds down on the Dactronic special that Todd has <laughs> maneuvered to connect himself to. One wide out left, man running near the formation right there, and there's a pitch cutting through. Nice looking move that time nice run. for Christian Bonchi. And well, look at him, he's, he's got, got it. it. It's gonna be a lot to take him down, and they cannot do it. Will not be able to catch him. That is a 46 yard touchdown run. We saw some brilliant running that time by Christian Bonchi. He is a 5'10, 170 pound junior, so. He's here this year, he'll be back next year, and you gotta like that. Scott, Simple Glacier little, Peak is on the board. Yeah, great uh, little misdirection right there, a little play. Six to nothing, Grizzlies, as they get set for the extra point. Coming up after a long count. There we go. And the extra point is good. So coming through with the extra point that time is Aiden Larson. And so at 6.10 to go here in the first quarter, 7 to nothing Glacier Peak. This is SDSPN.com High School Football here tonight. Be back soon. Back live here at Snohomish's Veterans Memorial Stadium. Mark Ockett, Scott Ligo bringing you the action. And our on top of it camera crew with uh, always a new bell or whistle in there, I'm sure. Oh, here we are. Hi, hi gang. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, everybody. Hi, Mom. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> and hi to one of my buddies, Ross Vecchio, back in Pennsylvania, in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. Said he'd tune in tonight. So we want to make sure... We, and he's a huge Penn State fan. Super. We'll talk about your son-in-law, or stepson, really shortly. Okay, here we go. That's going to be taken at the 10-yard line. A little bit of a high grab that time. And another solid return up to the 26-yard line. Coming up that time with 11-yard return was Jeffrey Perrin. Just a, yeah, he is a senior. And so with exactly six minutes to go, Woodenville will start at the 26-yard line of the Falcons. And the Grizzlies lead it by a score of 7 to nothing. So that's a statement right there with Glacier Peak seeing Woodenville come down like that and then the two penalties forced him back when they went for it initially on 4th and 15. Glacier Peak gets it at their own 13 and just does a great job of working their way quickly downfield for the score. Backing up, quarterback, Tyler Jones. It's in the air, uh, oh. too long. Good coverage back there as well. Yeah, if you receiver would have ran maybe a little longer route, he might have got maybe yeah. get that. Yeah, it was, uh, he kind of needed to put a little wing under the wing, or wind under the wings that time and stretch it out a little bit more. So that's uh, gonna be an incompletion. And at this point in time, Jones is one for three in passing. Had a 14-yard reception earlier. Completion being made, and now still back there in the shotgun. We see that so much in the game. And that is going to be a run by Chase Rudin. Chase Rudin pushing it forward as Rudin is able to get, looks like about three, maybe four yards on that. He got four on it. It's going to be second down and six. Just keep moving that football as much as they can, kind of chipping away at it. They need to make something happen here with the six yards to go. Look at this to the right side, and a little bit of a bobble, 
but it looks like the catch is made out there by Ackerman. That's Carson Ackerman. Yeah, I nice replay. You can see it on your screen right here. And sometimes you just have to get that thing in your uh, bread basket and you're all set to go. That's going to be a first down. Ackerman makes the catch. Give a shout out to our camera person tonight, Sarah. She's 21 tonight. Sarah's 21. Holy smokes. Seems like yesterday we just announced that she was uh, 18. Yeah, she yeah. just graduated. Oh. Wow, fantastic. Okay, well, he's close to football that time was Ryan Bowles. Ryan Bowles for Woodenville. Kind of, again, spreading things out offensively. Both mixing the passing game and the running game in. And Woodenville's looking good in that regard. Their drive just stalled as they were getting closer to the end zone earlier. And we got flags procedure. in the air. They've already committed a couple of penalties. It's going to be a false start. Three penalties for 15 yards right now. And back it goes. Second down, 12 yards to go. And the ball sits just ahead of the 36-yard line of the Woodenville Falcons. Three wide right, one to the left. Ball at the new hash mark as the player goes in motion, stops, short of going through the formation, and stopped right up front there. No running room that time. Yeah, they're trying to run a little long. Chase Rudin with the carry. He's got four carries for 12 yards now. Now that's going to bring up a third down, 12 yards to go. And the ball is set once again at the 36-yard line with running room out to the right side. Receivers get into their set. One back to the left of the quarterback. Dropping back is Tyler Jones. Pressure, pressure. Puts it in the hands of a receiver. And it's going to be nearly back to the line of scrimmage, perhaps one yard. The reception was made by Everett Ratliff. Now, at least Ratliff gave it a nice try that time. So that brings up now fourth down, 10 yards to go. And they're not going for it this time. They got the punting nope. unit out there. Back deep for Glacier Peak is senior Gabe Russell. Uh, he's got a chance to really give the Grizzlies great field position, standing at their own 27, a short punt. And that one's going to land at the 39, roll a little bit. And finally, going to be downed at it looks like about the 26 yard line. Yeah. And that's where the next drive will begin with 2.42 to go in the first quarter. And we really appreciate you all being tuned in to SPS, STSPN.com as uh, we thank all of our sponsors. Of course, our presenting sponsor, Les Schwab, the great tire stores here out on the western region. They're setting everything up as Glacier Peak will get set to go on offense. How are we doing on uh, conversions there, Scott? Um, Woodenville is uh, one for three, and uh, Glacier Peak is one for one on third downs. Straight eye formation, three wide right, one to the left, and uh, that time it's going to be hand up, taking it straight back up the middle, but not getting much on it. So that time... It'll go back to the 38-yard line, and it's going to be second down and nine yards to go. Glacier Peak kind of switching some things around a little bit. Quarter really moving fastly, fast here in the first as it just keeps ticking down. I think we're going to have possibly an official's timeout. I think they got to get the players all set. If you don't get that set, you're going to be charged with a timeout, and here we go. Okay. For Woodenville, number 12 out there had uh, blood on his uniform, Ryan Bowles. So they had to make sure they got him out. So that was an official's timeout, doing the right thing. Second down, nine yards to go. Taken, and a handoff once again. A little bit of positive yardage that time. Three yards on the carry. And that time, Trey Lechner ends up uh, getting some positive yardage, which you're certainly shooting for. And now it's sitting at 
Third down, five yards to go. He's the Wazoo commit, is that correct? I believe that is right. He's going I to WSU, so. yes. Have fun over there. <laughs> I did the 17 years I was attending undergraduate school. There he goes, that's incomplete. Yep. It's gonna be uh, intentional grounding or? I don't know if he yep. was, yeah, he wasn't, I don't think he was out of the tackle oh, box. Oh, oh roughing the pass, well, that's right, that's right. That's what the indication was by the official. So, so you do have a uh, roughing the passer call and they, you can throw it away in high school now. I think they've done that in part to prevent from the penalty call and then players getting hurt too. Okay, here we go. Third down, six yards to go was the original setup. And now they're gonna march it off after intention. No, they did say intentional grounding. Or they, they, they offset. They had offsetting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Because I thought that's what you noticed there, and then they called uh, the roughing the passers. So that's why it would still be sitting third yeah. down, six yards to go. And it's a short six. The ball is just about at the 32-yard line. Here we go. That back is way back there. Here we go. Carrying the football will be Trey Lechner. Oh. And Lechner keeps bouncing and going. What a great game that time for Lechner from the 32-yard line up to the 48-yard line. That works. Well, he's definitely showed why he's a Division I uh, recruit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, comment on his weight. And so that takes it to the 48-yard line and another first down for Glacier Peak. Just 52 seconds left here in the quarter. Legner now has two carries for 21 yards, and they want to go that way again. But it's not working out as well this time. Forward progress will have him just at a two-yard loss before they flip it over and uh, get set to go. And while, speaking of which, we're getting closer to the end of the first quarter, clicking down to 24 seconds. Second down, 12 yards to go. Glacier Peak talking things over. Let's see if they get into play in before the end of the quarter. Now down to seven seconds. If not, they'll just turn around and go the other direction. Two seconds, nope. one. And that is the end of the first quarter. So a very quick first quarter here at Snohomish High School, home of both Snohomish High School and Glacier Peak High School. And it is seven to nothing, Glacier Peak Grizzlies. And they got that score with 10, 6 10 to go in the first quarter here. And we'll go to the second quarter coming up just like that. Three more to go, <laughs> at least. And uh, it is definitely Friday Night Lights here at Snohomish High School on STSPN.com. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. All right, welcome back. Snohomish High School, Glacier Peak at home here tonight. Who are they against playing? Woodenville, leads seven to nothing. They scored with 6-10 to go in the first quarter. And we go to quarter number two as Glacier Peak will go the other direction now. It is second down and 12, and the ball is at the 46-yard line. Also mentioned a couple of sponsors, McDaniels, Do It Center, and Fred's Rivertown Alehouse. They are charter sponsors going back to 2010 when STSPN was created. Oh, nice play. That is River Lean to Liam Nelson Lennon. Liam Lennon making the catch that time. That takes it from the 48-yard line of Glacier Peak, way across field, at another 16 on top of the two, and you got 18 yards on the play. That was a classic uh, schoolyard play. The quarterback just kind of said, go up the field, and he went up the field and made a nice little catch. 44 yards passing now for River Lean, and he's got over 1,500 
on the yardage this year. He's had a great year. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball is at the 35-yard line. Far hash mark. And night. oh, great looking run right there. Be, looks like another first down. You had lean in the quarterback position, and then the handoff to Ryan King, again, utilizing a number, another member of that running team to get that really solid gain. Yeah, nice little counter play out of there. 12 yard pickup on that one. And it'll bring up first down, 10 yards to go. And the ball is at the 23 yard line. We're adding up those first downs. They're oh, getting, yeah. getting up there. They're at five already. Five for Glacier Peak. Second strong drive right here. That slows things down a little bit. So each team has just had two drives. Glacier Peak is in their second drive. Coming up on 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Now what happens is that the 16 winners this weekend, today and tomorrow, then there's a full draw by the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, and that will be coming up on Sunday, and then they'll lay out all of everything for the brackets and uh, how they roll out from there. Yep. Second down, nine yards to go. Riverlean feeling some pressure, finding some room, cutting left after cutting right. Now a little stutter step, takes it inside. Enough for the first down and a lot more after that. Lean's gonna get down to the five yard line. There is a flag out there. So we have an 18 yard gain, but let's see how they sort this out. Okay, looks like a personal foul on Glacier Peak. As indicated, that would be against Adam Troxel. Bringing it back. That's some fancy running, though, by Lean. Eh? He... Okay, so we got to get the spot of the set foul. here. Going to be the spot of the foul. So they're getting it all set, so it's a dead ball foul. Yeah. Okay. It was second down before, so it should be third down, and they're going to move it up. Yeah, there we go. They took it to fourth. Now let's just see here. You get a first down. Yeah. Okay. And dropping back is the quarterback. That is River Lean going to the air, and it's going to be caught by Trey Lechner. And incomplete. There we go. Oh. So that makes it uh, second down. Second down, 10 yards to go. 10 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the second quarter. And Glacier pick up seven to nothing. Also sponsors GNS Heating, Cooling and Electrical, Gene Johnson Plumbing, Airfield Espresso, and more to come. So we've got a second down, 10 yards to go. Timeout has been called by Glacier Peak. Timeout, Glacier Peak. That's, their first time That's their first timeout used. We'll take a timeout as well. And with 10-10 to go in the first half, it is 7-0 Glacier Peak right here on STSPN.com. You may have heard the phrase, the early bird gets the worm. Well, at Bickford Ford, the early bird gets first crack at the new 2023 Fords. Right now, order a new 2023 Ford F-150 and move to the front of the line for America's number one truck for the last 45 years. Or start your order on a 2023 Ranger, Edge, Bronco Sport, or Explorer. Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or at Bickford.net.
All right, we are set to go. Still want to get the officials for you. This one's just been rolling along. 10-10 to go. And uh, it is 7-0 Glacier Peak. Ball is set at the 21-yard line. Two-man wide left. I formation with the quarterback and the shotgun. And that is River Lean. Glacier Peak trying to get a score. Going two for two on drives. And that's going to be still lean hanging onto the ball and finally chased down and taken down. Okay, so for the officials, referee is Jim Rotten. Umpire is Omar Kordahi. Line judge Scott Pattison. Linesman Mike Dolly. And the back judge is Bill Maielli. We've seen those guys before and a couple of those we had the last time. I was able to do a game on September 23rd, which was Snohomish against Edmonds Woodway. Now, Todd, you were telling me that last week's game, Lake Stevens and Glacier Peak had like a record amount of hits. Is that right? Or viewers? Or close? Oh, yeah. It was, it was about 3,000 just for the night. That's fantastic. Well, let us know how we're doing. If we need to amp it up. We will. We want to draw them <laughs> in from all over the world. Got a lot of fans over there in the Eastern Bloc. Third down, 12 yards to go, and to the air. I like the way he skipped out of that. Oh, that's going to be complete. Down towards the end zone. Very close. They have an indicator. I don't think he got in there. That's Trey Lechner from the 23-yard line, and that's a 22-yard passing play. So Lechner's come through with a couple of nice catches, or a couple of running plays, then that nice catch right there as he came out of the backfield. What did you see there as he was able to wiggle through there and Get open for the uh, pass reception. Just run a nice, what they call a dig route, coming across the, the face of the uh, safety. You got really two great athletes in uh, Jensen and Lechner. So, under nine minutes to go in the second half, and still seven to nothing Glacier Peak, but they are pounding on the door. It is first down and goal to go from the two yard line. Close in that time. Ryan King is the ball carrier. It was kind of tough. They put on a nice stand right out there at the goal line. Official waving his hands in the air. And we do have an official's timeout on the field. Now we're going. Okay, clock ticking once again as Glacier Peak has the football. And looking over to the sideline to find out what head coach wants to do. Shane Keck, the head coach of the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. Once again, River Lean back there. Ryan King to his left. Lean rolling out to the left side. Looking, looking, finding. How about that? With the catch, Trey Lechner. Lechner's really been strong in this one so far as he gets it as a two-yard touchdown play. And it'll make it 13 to nothing. Glacier Peak scoring with 7.41 to go here in the second quarter. And so that looked really nice and tidy. Got his man open there, and we'll see the extra point attempt coming up. Once again, kicking is Aiden Larson. Nope. Nope. That one isn't going to happen. And so it's going to be 13 to nothing. 13 to nothing with 7.41 to go here in the second quarter. And look at this. Watch this play. He's got great mobility. Just kind of flung it almost sidearm that time. Pretty much three quarters and maybe a little lower than about two thirds as they'd say. And the cage was made by Lechner. So good night for both the quarterback River Lean and Trey Lechner. And we're going to go ahead and take a break. This is SDSPN.com.
Okay, welcome back as we have 741 to go in the second quarter. 13 to nothing. Grizzlies on top. They just got a two-yard passing play from Riverlean to Trey Lechner. The extra point was not good, so that could come into play down the road. Absolutely. Ooh, dropped it. Now picks it up, gets a handle on it. Running that time for Woodenville after having a little trouble handling it initially is Jeffrey Parent. He's a senior and takes it up from the 13-yard line. Seems like where a lot of stuff's taking place in this game. And he's going to get it up to the 28-yard line. It's going to be first down, 10 yards to go. Yeah, I think Woodenville's got to try to answer here to have a chance in the second half. All right, Woodenville lining up on the near hash mark. Let's see three out to the left side, one to the right side, and they're all set to go. Play fake. Catch and tackle. Nice looking move that time. A little slant route. Carson Ackerman had a play earlier that was looking good on a running play. This time gets the pass and their quarterback's pretty sharp too. Tyler Jones. Both these quarterbacks have a real good presence back there in the pocket. Another little slant right there. Slant play and the catch is made by Everett Ratliff. He's got a couple of catches in this one. Now, what is Woodenville up to as far as first downs? Uh, they have four now. Five completions in the game for Tyler Jones. First down, 10 yards to go at the 40. Now they split things out this time. Man goes in motion. That's going to be Carson Ackerman. And the QB is going to hang on to it as Jones will bolt ahead. He's got seven yards. That's a key gain right there as they approach midfield. Good answer so far. Second down, three yards to go now. And they're taking a look over to the sideline to get an idea about what direction they want to go in, what play they want to go with. Too wide to the left. Now they split a third receiver out there. Here we go. Jones hangs on to the football. He's across midfield. He's got a first down. That is a seven yard gain. So Jones doing it both with his arm and with his legs in this game. And he'll bring a first down at the 46 yard line of Glacier Peak. So we're seeing Woodenville make some progress on their third drive, much like they did on their first drive when they got deep into Glacier Peak territory and then got to a fourth down situation, a, a couple of penalties of five yards, and suddenly they ended up with the quarterback punting. Oh, in and out of the hands that time of Carson Ackerman. Try to do a little play action pass slant on the backside. Second down 10 from the 46 yard line near hash mark. But they, both teams, just keep moving it around as far as ball distribution, running, passing. Makes for an entertaining game. Keeps the fans in it, that's for sure. Five minutes and two seconds to go in the second quarter. Taking the snap, dropping back a little bit. That time is Jones. And Pick. he's picked off. Glacier Peak coming through. Austin Burns with the interception. That's a big one. Austin Burns makes the pick. He's 5'10", 170 pound senior. And that is a really large play for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies as Woodenville was methodically moving the field, ball downfield and Burns just steps in there. Scott, break that one down. Yeah, he, the quarterback uh, got a little rush on his face and he brought the ball down and threw it again and the outside linebacker made a nice little play back there and nice play. Glacier Peak really has a chance to put an exclamation point on this first half here at Snohomish in the district game. They want to be moving on. Glacier Peak, a very strong program. They played for the state championship 
just a few years ago at the Tacoma Dome, back when it was, oh, look at that beautiful ball, just too far. Yeah. You know, that one was just looked really, whether he caught it or not, it looked great in the air. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and there's no points awarded for that. Nope. But it looked good. And it and, and really shows uh, how strong his arm is. That is yeah, River the Lane. Yeah, that's a good point. The Checking started. the win out. Now, now, that was something we wanted to get to is uh, weather conditions. Not really bad, right, except it's wet on the field. Yeah. But as far as uh, rain, which there was certainly plenty coming up from down in Seattle, but right now it's nice. Actually, when I got out of the car, it was pretty warm. Way better than what they were saying. Yeah. All right, 4.45 to go. Second quarter. Second down, 10 yards to go. 42, near hash mark. Play underway. Play action fake. Keeping the football was River Lean. And Lean does it again. He's got eight yards on that carry. I think they're just going to give him seven as his knee went down. So third down is what it will be. Third down, three yards to go. They need to get to the 48-yard line of Woodenville. And the clock ticking. So now you're playing, speaking of methodical, you're playing a methodical control offense type of a game, Scott. And uh, But with what we've seen, they can throw pretty much a number of things at you with their passing and, and certainly with what Lechner's done off those passes from Lean. A lot is possible right here. Yep. Third down, three yards to go. Bowling ahead. It looked like Lechner that time. Going to be a little Hit short. It. Be just a little bit short. And we're talking definitely within less than a foot. Yeah. Probably around seven or eight inches. But I do like the way that they're working the clock, working it down. Ball's just inside the 49-yard line. So they're going to back it up just a bit. Yeah. So you've got maybe a yard to go. Now they'll say it's at the 49-yard line. Checking things out there. It looks like, oh, yeah, we got a nice crowd in here tonight. That's what you love to see. Now, coming over here, I came up I-5, went 128th, went to Seattle Hill Road, and the most beautiful sight was coming that way because you're going to go down into the valley. And I see these five lights way in the distance, which is this stadium. Yep. And you didn't even have to look for directions. I already know how to get here, but all I had to do was follow the Friday night lights. What a beautiful sight. So we're going to take a break, or we're going to keep it here? We're going to keep it here? You know what? We are well into the football season, and we got plenty of that to go. But coming up, right after football season, and it kind of intertwines, we're going to go to the gyms again, and we have high school basketball. SDSPN.com is going to bring you the best of high school basketball up here in the Western Conference. Maybe we'll slide over there from our normal schools that we see. Now another normal one is getting to be Archbishop Murphy. We love coming here to Snohomish, seeing Glacier Peak. Boys and girls, you see a great dunk there at Glacier Peak. It is STSPN.com, and we got it coming. We got it coming. I'm looking forward to it. It's something that is so much fun, and as we go along, especially when you turn the calendar and get into January, and then what I like to call February frenzy, leading into the high school March Madness at the Tacoma Dome in the first weekend in March. Carrying the football and doing great with it is River Lean. Look at this, from the 49-yard line. Pulled down. It was a long time before they could get to him. And he's going to go down at the 13-yard line. That is a 36-yard gain for River Lean. That guy is good. Very good. Lots of tools right there. So Glacier Peak with the big first down. What do you got him for now, Scott? They are uh, their seventh first down. Fabulous job by the Grizzlies. Led 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. And then added one on here with 7.41 to go in the second. Now there's 2.35, and the clock is spinning. And I mean literally spinning. It has been a very quick first half here at Snohomish. It's only quarter to 8, and we started just a little past 7 o'clock. That's a quick half. Handoff, and it's Lechner. Well, I tell you, this guy, 
You see the talent right there. As Lechner moves it in a little closer, taken down to the six yard line. And it'll be, it looks like a gain of seven yards, so it'll be second down and three. Glacier Peak wants to definitely pound this one in. And this has been an incredibly or well orchestrated drive in their third drive of the game. So each team has had three drives. Wooden Bills definitely made progress in drive one and drive three. And they were further back at the end of that first quarter in uh, their second drive and had to punt quite a distance. And then Snohomish got good field position. I mean, Glacier Peak got good field position here at Snohomish. There's the handoff. No running room really right there. And now you have to take a look at the clock. You look at the timeouts, Glacier Peak has just one left. Woodenville has not used any at this point. And 118 to go in the first quarter. So Scott, if you're down there on the sideline and you have been, what are you thinking? You got to, you, you want to score here, obviously. You want to get up 20 nothing halftime. You know, maybe put the, uh, take a little bit out more of Woodenville. And see what they got for the second half start of it. But what they've been able to do, they've got enough, you know, talent down there. Got uh, Jensen down there too. So, I mean, they've got a lot of players. All right, here we go. Third down, three yards to go. Lean takes it back. Holding on to it, and he's going to go down. You got to call timeout. Yeah, you got to call timeout. You got to burn that last timeout. We're hearing whistles down there on the field. Still clicking down. Oh, they're going to go for it? No, nope. they stopped at 27. They're going to go for a field goal. All right, field goal unit coming on. Now the extra point kicker has been Aiden Larson. So they're Larson out there once again. So let's see where they're going to spot this ball. This is going to be at the 17-yard line, so a little past the 17. So it's about a 27-and-a-half-yard field goal here. Let's see if he can pop it through. Even three points would make a difference right here. Whoops. Woodenville just called the timeout. Woodenville called their first timeout of the half. Smart move. Scott, what do you say? You want to take a break? Sure. We'll take a break. Be back with more after this from one of our great sponsors on STSPN.com. Okay, we are back to live action. You see the score right there. 13 to nothing, Glacier Peak leading Woodenville. Six seconds to go in the second quarter. Glacier Peak is gonna try a 27 and a half yard field goal. And it's Aiden Larson, who's one for two on extra point attempts so far in this game. They have some long counts, that's for sure. Oh, and block. Oh, here we go, the other direction. Look at this, that is a big one. Coming back down the other way is Jeffrey Perrin. Perrin takes it all the way to the house. Blocking that one as it was at the 20-yard line. And he turns it back the other direction, over 80 yards on that return. That was huge. Huge. Wow. Sudden game changer right there. Yeah, what I thought was going to be maybe the knockout punch. Now allows uh, Woodenville to get right back into this game. Okay, 13 to six is the score, and Woodenville talking over what they want to do right here because Glacier Peak did miss an extra point, and they actually I'm had thinking, to flip, no, they're going to the go for an extra point. So not two, but one. So going for the extra point here will be Finley Bragg. 
off the hold of Everett Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe with the hold. High snap, we got whistles going off. Wow, zero on the clock. False start, they're getting to be experts at that down there tonight, <laughs> Woodenville is. What is that, three false starts? Three, or at least maybe even four. Yeah, they had the three, I, uh, the, the one, and then there was another type of call in there. Oh, illegal, illegal man in the neutral yeah. zone, and two other false starts. Okay, that's gonna back him up for the extra point. He's going to be taking that from the 14-yard line, which is uh, 24 yards to tack on that extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Zero on the clock. You see it right there, and it's 13-7. to seven. we got a brand-new ball game. Wow, is that going to make for a great second half here on STSPN.com? And we're going to keep it here for just a little bit as you see both teams heading to the locker room here at Snohomish's Veterans Memorial Stadium and the bright lights here on Friday night showing in the background there and full illumination of the field. And wow, Scott, what a first half of football. Very entertaining, very fast paced. Classic uh, West Coast football game. Uh, yeah, and uh, a little bit of extra thrown in there, like you were saying about the legendary Terry Ennis, who might throw once or twice a game, who we lost him in 2007 to prostate cancer, but we both got to, Did you coach on his staff? Did not coach on his staff, coached against him. Okay. And, and the great Dick Armstrong oh up there at Oh my Snohomish. gosh, those two. Dick Armstrong, the legend who coached here at Snohomish for so many years, became the winningest coach in state football history. And then uh, Sid Otten took that mantle, but Terry was up pursuing it. Had he lived, he probably would have coached another eight to 10 years. And he might be on top right yeah. now. Yeah. Yes. So here we go. Let's take a look what's going on down there on the field. Look at this. What a beautiful sight we have out there from the STSPN drone cam. And you see Todd doing a, a marvelous work with uh, his drone up there. And it's always fun for those great aerial shots. You see the field here. And it is a beautiful facility here at Snohomish. And we love coming out here year in and year out. So Todd, great job with the high-end view, and uh, I think we'll kick at the halftime right now. It is 13 to 7. Glacier Peak is leading against Woodenville on STSPN.com. heard the phrase the early bird gets the worm well at bickford ford the early bird gets first crack at the new 2023 fords right now order a new 2023 ford f-150 and move to the front of the line for america's number one truck for the last 45 years or start your order on the 2023 ranger edge bronco sport or explorer washington's number one volume ford dealership bickford ford on bickford avenue in snohomish or at bickford.net Sending it big. Oh, oh my goodness! In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this! To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. I love a on you, I get that gang on you, you better pay for it, I put that thing on you, you ever play with it, that's like... To the fans, to the followers, and the haters. Come with us to the blood, to the sweat, and the 
broken bones. Ah. You rehab. We never quit. We never give up. We take control. To the world titles. To the world's first. The world's best. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on a team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. People say that there's no such thing as superheroes, that superhuman strength is only something you read about in comic books. They say men can't fly and they can't breathe underwater. That's because they don't know my dad. The Navy SEAL Foundation is committed to supporting the warriors and families of naval special warfare. Join us at NavySealFoundation.org. McDaniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's.
Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. People say that there's no such thing as superheroes, that superhuman strength is only something you read about in comic books. They say men can't fly and they can't breathe underwater. That's because they don't know my dad. The Navy SEAL Foundation is committed to supporting the warriors and families of Naval Special Warfare. Join us at NavySealFoundation.org.
Okay, 13 to 7 is the score as Glacier Peak leads Woodenville. We're at the half and ticking closer to the start of the second half. The Glacier Peak Grizzlies will have the ball to start the second half here tonight at Snohomish's Veterans Memorial Stadium. Anybody's ball game, and that is because of an 89 yard return by Jeffrey Perrin off a blocked field goal attempt of 27 yards. And he took it all the way to the bank. It was a beautiful play, and that's closed the gap. It was uh, Glacier Peak trying to extend their lead to 16 to nothing, and instead, things turned completely around. There it is, right there. And he had everybody chasing him and won it by a country mile. Look at that. Just a great play coming through Jeffrey Perrin, a 5'11", 175-pound senior, also plays wide receiver and defense. He was a defensive back in that play. And uh, Todd, he wears number 17. Now, both your sons played for Glacier Peak. They wore number 59. Are, are they anywhere close to retiring those numbers here? Well, we, you know, we talk, we talk, I talked with uh, Coach Hannon, and I asked him if we could retire that jersey because, I mean, there's just never been quite the dynasty because that's three <laughs> years each, right? So that's oh, six yeah, that's years. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's six years. You know, yeah. that's probably half the time of this, you know, the school was in. That's a but good point. They, they talked to 59 that, uh, that's uh, playing now. and, and uh, He wouldn't give it up? Yeah, yeah no, they said that it didn't look like he was going to want to give up that number. That's Caleb Owens, 5'10", 180-pound junior. So, of course not. He's going to be back next year. <laughs> yeah, that's Offensive right. lineman, defensive lineman. Put yourself in Caleb's shoes, would you? <laughs> Come on. And, uh, and so, Boa, tell us about your two sons while we have a second, because they both uh, have done well since they left Glacier Peak. They have. One of them is a, uh, is a manager for one of the, what do you call it, uh, for Gene Johnson Plumbing. Yeah. Right? He's one of the, one of our sponsors. One of the, one is of the what sponsor. I think you're to and say. the other one is a uh, DNA scientist for, uh, uh, for a biotech company. Wow. Those four years that George Fox went quick. I think he was there five, wasn't he? <laughs> no, he was there four. Okay, four and a bright guy. Okay, so uh, it's going to be a oh. kickoff. Glacier Peak taking it at the 19. And what do we have going right here? Bringing it up. That time was Austin Burns. Austin Burns brings it forward to the 27-yard line, and that's where we get started. 13-7, to seven, Grizzlies on top. All right, Scott, they uh, had a... Good chunk of air taken out of their balloon at the uh, end of that first half. So how do they reload from that? Obviously, they've had time to talk about it in the locker room. But mentally, overall, how do you go, okay, let's just get going again and forget what happened? Is that basically what you tell the troops? Yeah, I think that they continue to do what they've been doing the first half, get the Lechner and use the skills set of their quarterback. Riverlene hands off. That's a good looking run right there. Bring up a second down. And it's going to be a seven yard gain. Yeah, not to, not to be critical of Glacier Peak and the coaches, but it just seems that they're kind of like a potpourri of everything and not really settling on something. I think that's six yards on a first play. I mean, I just continue to run that until they can stop it. Yeah. Ryan King had that run right there. So it's going to bring up second down, three yards to go. And the ball is set down at the 34-yard line. First minute of action here in the third quarter. Three wide to the right. And running room out that way as well. There is a completion. Oh. And he gets pushed back. That's Cooper Jensen who made the grab. And we'll see what they do to mark it. And actually, they take him out to the 40-yard line. So that worked out well. Forward progress had him there. And he was brought down on the tackle by Jake Kerboshi. Yeah, his helmet came off the tee. He has come off the field. Yep, got to stay on top of that. Now, you are involved in player safety as well. Yes, sir. And let's slide that in here as soon and as much as we can because we have talked about it, but it hasn't been, it's been over a year. And uh, so just get out what, what uh, you come, your organization you're involved with. I work for a company called Atavis, and we work on rugby-style football tackling. And so the ball is set at the 40-yard line. It's first down, 10 yards to go. And the give this time is to Ryan King. And King's going to get one yard on it. It'll be second down, 
nine yards to go from the 41. So rugby style football tackling. Break it down a little bit more, can you please? Yeah, the simple premise of it, the whole thing is to get the head out of the out of the tackle in the game. And uh, you know, last years they've talked a lot about CTE, the concussions, all that kind of stuff. CTE is what happens if you have two consecutive concussions and can lead to memory loss. So we you know, teach getting the head out of the game. Uh, to age myself, we, when I first got into coaching, we used to call it uh, going across the bow. Yes. Second down, nine yards to go. Bit of running room right there. Going to bring it up about four yards and carrying the football will be Christian Bonchi. And that is going to be a four yard gain taking it to third down, five yards to go. And the ball is at the 45 yard line. And again, Moving right along here in this third quarter. That first half didn't take long to play. Like you said, we might be done by 9 o'clock. Things have a tendency to slow down, though, as you get deeper into the second half. Each team with the three timeouts to get rolling again here in the second half. Third down, five yards to go. Ball marked at the near hash mark. You got three wide to the left. And a quarterback, a good one, River Lean. Lean fakes, going to throw low, and they say not complete. The intended receiver was Cooper Jensen, and they're going to have to bring the punting unit on. So Glacier Peak in a different position than what they have been. They've had four drives. This is their first of the second half. And previously, the first two ended with touchdowns. The third, a blocked field goal that led to a Woodenville touchdown, and now they're punting for the first time. At least that's how they're setting up, and Woodenville has a deep man back at the 20-yard line. Yeah, Woodenville's in a safe punt formation to make sure that there's no fake here. Yep, they've got several guys up. It's in the air, and they're just going to let that one land. No, he's going to pick it up at the 22-yard line, getting the grab that time for Woodenville, Casey Larson. Larson, just a sophomore. So with 8.53 left, they'll... Bring the Woodenville offense out there. That's Tyler Jones at quarterback, who's also shown a great skill set, just like his counterpart, River Lean, over there on the other side for Glacier Peak. Jones is a junior. Lean is a senior. Big draw coming up on Sunday. WIAA get all set up for the 16 teams and how they're going to lay them out. Working on the quarterfinals. That's 16, then you get it down to the quarters, and then semis, and then championship, which is the first weekend there in December. It's hard to believe we're starting to creep towards that time of year, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so how are things going as far as what you were uh, talking about as far as the safety and tackling? And, the, and have you seen good progress? Yeah, I think that, you know, uh, the USA Football has a program called Heads Up. We do what we do, and uh, most importantly, it's just about the safety of the game and trying to protect the game. And Loss of one yard on the play. Jones has got a little bit of time, but not anymore. He's going down. Coming first and through that time for Glacier Peak was Will Jenkins. He's 6'4", 210 pounds. No mistake about that. Looks like the biggest player for Glacier Peak is a 6'5", 320-pound senior, Jordan Yandila. That's a load right there. You see Yandila right up front there. Yeah, he is a big kid. He anchors the center of the line. I want him on my side when I walk through the streets of Seattle. Here we go. Pass over on the right side, and the catch is made. So that'll move it forward a bit. But still got a ways to go, and they'll switch things out here. That's going to bring up a punting situation for Andy Henry, as he'll be back deep, and Glacier Peak has a player back as well. Gabe Russell is going to be right around inside the 40-yard line. Camping out near the 38 in the uh, far side of the field. Now backing up a little bit. High snap, almost blocked. And that was going to land right near midfield. Good pursuit on that time from Glacier Peaks.
player breaking through that time, Owen Gluth. So Glacier Peak's going to have nice field position. They'll be at the 44-yard line of the Grizzlies. Want to mention Home Comfort Alliance is now hiring for a lead generator at the new Costco warehouse opening in Lake Stevens this month. You can apply online at homecomfortalliance.com slash careers. That's homecomfortalliance.com slash careers. Great job opportunity for you right there. Who would want to work at Costco? Oh. 6.46 to go. Third quarter action. Ball at the 44. Glacier Peak starting their drive. This is their fifth drive of the game, and it's Lechner who's tripped up. Do we see a flag over there? I don't, I don't think I see No, I thought something flew. There is a flag. Yeah, I thought I saw something fly out. Yeah, you see it right there by the 45, just ahead of the ball marker. Right where 33 is standing, not too far, where all the refs are now. I guess that's why they're congregating. We got a block in the back. We have our specialist, Jeff Matson, longtime official up here. He's like our Steve Pereira on the national level, so he's uh, feeding us information. Now, if we have a controversial play, a major controversial play, we might have to open up the mic and let him uh, break it down. All right? I think that's a contractual obligation that Todd has him set up with. <laughs> okay. First down and 19 yards to go. Lean, hanging onto it, leans to his right. And the pass there to the 45. Look at this, 50, 45, taken down at about the 41-yard line. The catch by Gabe Russell. First down, Glacier Peak. That is a very important play right there. Great play by that receiver. Cut a little cut back, back into the, into the field. Both teams have punted here in this quarter. And so Glacier Peak, which had great momentum in that first quarter, they had strong drives in that first half all the way through. And uh, they get to the second half here and had to punt the first time around. So they're trying to make more happen this time around. There we go. That's Lechner again. He's just been a workhorse out there. Taking it down to the 38-yard line, a three-yard gain, and it makes it second down, seven yards to go. See under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Still a very close game. If you're Glacier Peak, you've got to be careful not to make a mistake and cough it up or have it picked off, especially if you get into the vicinity of one Jeffrey Perrin. What do we have there for a score from Snohomish? It was 45 to nothing, I think, at the last I heard. 63 to nothing. 63 to nothing. That means they're deep into the running clock. Oh, they're just in the second quarter, so you have to be in the second half. And I thought, I was just thinking, well, they got to be in the third quarter. No, it's in the first half. 63 to nothing. Darn, poor Bethel. It's going to be a long way getting that's a, home. That's a long ride home. That's a long ride home. You just, But I think everybody's going to be dejected after that one. I just don't see them coming back at this point. Yeah. Okay, we got a third down situation now. Third down, eight yards to go. And they're talking things over. Each team still has three timeouts left. 30 and 8, and the 502 you see up on the screen there. STSPN.com. Also, special thanks to the U.S. Navy and U.S. Army for their sponsorship. Our CEO and producer, well, Charlie Elvick. time back there. 12 years in the Navy. There he goes. That is River Lean, and he's got the first down. He had all kinds of time. What allowed for that, Scott? Just great offensive line blocking. Yeah, just really, to be honest. Yeah, he had plenty of time. And he's, that's not the first time tonight he's had that experience. He's had great time back there, and he's so athletic and has the various options that he can go with that breaks it on through there. That's another first down. What do you have him up to? They are at 10 now. So Glacier Peak still going along, moving the ball up to the 28-yard line of Woodenville. If you're just tuning in, Glacier Peak 
the blue tops and the lighter colored pants with the silver helmets. Woodenville in the green pants, white tops with the green numbers and the green helmets. You think Woodenville, you think of the Woodenville sports royalty, which would be the Tuiasa Sofo family. Absolutely. Um, all five of them still deeply involved in sports is Leslie Tuiasa Sopo, who's now Leslie Gabriel, is the associate, longtime associate head coach for Husky Volleyball. Yeah. And yeah. I just found out not too long ago that Matt Tuiasa Sopo, at one time a number one draft pick of the Mariners, is a AAA manager yep. back east in uh, Richmond, Virginia, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and Marcus is the offensive coordinator at Rice University. At Rice, yeah. Ashley is the AD at Monroe High School. We remember when she was the uh, girls basketball coach and Zach is involved in football too. It's just incredible. It's good college planning for your uh, the parents. They did a nice <laughs> job of uh, getting division one athletes. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yep. All right, so we're looking at third down, four yards to go. Seems like they're spending quite a bit of time looking over to the sidelines, getting plays called in, but you want to be sure also and taking more time off the clock. Glacier Peak has done an excellent job of that tonight. They did a tremendous job in that first half and then had the blocked field goal. But everything else they did on that drive was to perfection. River Lee, and he was faking the pitch. He's going inside the 20-yard line. And looks like he's got enough for the first down. He's, he's going to go inside the 18-yard line. Monster Energy Drink is also one of our great sponsors. Adrenaline Fundraising, which will present the player of the game, and I think we have another one that goes with that. Is that the, there's the lineman of the game. It's the Les Schwab lineman of the, oh, look at that. That is a beautiful looking t-shirt. Todd has so much fun. He doesn't just nap when he's not doing this. He's working on projects. You know, we talked about, and here's the play right here. Lean hangs onto it. To the 15, inside the 15 to the 10, inside the 10. And very close to a first down. I think he should be just a little bit short, Scott. He's got a little moxie on him. He's a good little football player. He sure is. 6'1", 205-pound senior. And, you know, we talked about Airfield Espresso bringing by the parachute punches, which Jeff Madsen actually was watching that day when we had that historic moment at Snohomish's gym a few hundred feet away from here, and uh, he remembered it well when we got him delivered to us. What I really want to try for is making a mention of how much we love Fords for Bigford Ford, so hopefully we'll have free cars delivered to us. <laughs> you got to work with the, the, the sponsors. And the pass is complete. Coming through that time to Lechner. Oh, late flag. Late flag. He went down to the 13. Might have been a looks, face mask. Face mask, yeah. Now, Todd, just working to sponsor in while they get this all set up. Uh, you and the Bickford family go back a long time, and uh, you got a new truck uh, earlier this year from uh, there. That's a, a brand new F-150. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the great service and such that you received during your purchase. I just, I can't even say enough about it. The uh, truck, I ordered it in November, it came in in April, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> which is not too far off of then a the regular engine year, came actually. a couple months, months later. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. But they right, got me great financing and everything. Oh, so. good, yeah. And with your credit, they had to pull a few strings. But here we go. <laughs> First down and goal from the eight yard line. Yeah, it's called dealer paper. <laughs> It's going to be a carry hanging on with the football that time is Cooper Jensen. All right. So that's going to take you down inside the five yard line. And it'll be goal to go still. Todd, by the way, 798 last month, 818 this month. Just got, the, just got it in our ongoing contest. Yeah, well, one card, 40 grand. <laughs> Second down and goal from the four yard line. Here we go. He still had eight to go. It's a little closer than that. Look at this. River Lane backs it in. That's a big one right there. 
39 seconds to go here in the third quarter. River Lee taking it in from four yards out to make it 19 to seven late here in the third quarter. But you know, Scott, except for the one drive where they had the punt, Glacier Peak has been really impressive moving the ball Absolutely. in those four other drives. Absolutely. So now, do they go for two or do they go for just one? It, it looks, looks like, like they're, they're going to go for two, yeah, aren't Yeah, it looks they? like they're lining up for yeah. two. Because they missed an extra point earlier. Yeah. Larson had the good extra point on the first touchdown with 6.10 to go in the first quarter, and then he missed the next time. In fact, it was blocked. It was 7.41 after they scored in the second quarter. And so now here we go again as they're bringing out the offensive unit, not special teams, to get ready to go and try to get the one they missed before plus another one. Two-point conversion coming up. This could be a factor as we get into that fourth quarter. And Yeah, we're looking at possible delay a game. We got a timeout that's called by Glacier Peak. That's their first timeout used in half number two. And we're going to be back with more on STSPN.com. All right, we're getting ready to go here. And before the break, they were looking at two, and it looks like they're going to still go in that direction and try to get it up to 21, which is a wise decision to approach right here. 39 seconds to go here in the third quarter in a very efficiently moving game. All right, there's the give. No, he's going to hang on to it. Play action that time instead. And Going up forward is Lane, and he's going to cough it up right towards the end, and that will be whistled dead. So the, the fake was real nice to Ryan King, and then Lean kept it and decided to go with it as uh, he ends up running into a bunch of Woodenville players and then coughs up the football. 39 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We'll take another break. This is STSPN.com. And we're getting ready to go here. Glacier Peak will kick off after they miss the two-point conversion. They lead it 19-6, to 39 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Mark Ockett with Scott Ligo. Also, Jeff Matson giving us assistance on uh, spotting uh, the officials' calls as soon as they happen. There he is over there. He's uh, texting his mom. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, here we are. And we're happy to be here. I got my long, and it's virtually brand new, Husky lead the team out of the tunnel coat on. You know, like you see, like Don James would wear something like this. There we go. Take in there at the 12-yard line, and that guy's quick. Oh, Jeff Preparin is uh, bringing it up forward. And that's going to go at the 31-yard line. That's where Woodenville will get started. 28 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 
Well, if Woodenville wants any chance, they're going to have to make something happen in this drive right here. Yes, they are, because with what we've seen from Glacier Peak, they are just tremendous at working those plays, you know, trying different things out as they go downfield, switching different players who carry the ball or make the receptions, and taking time off the clock. Yep. Well, that's going to be a flag oh. right there. So, well, we have a second here, and we get the call on that there. That's going to be a uh, false start, five-yard penalty, move it back, make it first and 15, and the ball will be at the 26. Tell us about your stepson. His name again? Joe Lorg. And he was at Penn State for quite a few years, wasn't he? He was there for three years with James Franklin. Okay, and then now he came out to the University of Oregon yep. under the new coach there. Dan Lanning. Let's get back to that in just a minute. First down, 15 to go from the 26-yard line. In completion. So it, it seemed like he and Coach Franklin had a good report. Was it a, a move to the West Coast? Well, it's a little bit of a little bit of that. His wife is from Oregon. He went to Western Oregon. But more importantly, Dan Lanning, which is a crazy part of the whole story, was. Uh, Joe's graduate assistant coach at Arizona State under Todd Graham. Okay. So. And the completion, making the catch that time is Andy Henry, and Henry's got good yardage on it. Takes it up to the 36-yard line. So when you mentioned that the coach at Arizona, so when your stepson was there, uh, and his first name again? Joe Lord. Joey. Joe. Uh, so when he was there at Arizona State, was he a player there or a coach there? He was the special teams coordinator there, too. Okay. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. 19-7, to 7, as you see on the screen. This one isn't over. Woodenville gets hot. He scores a couple of touchdowns, or at least one. Makes it interesting again. We're going to go to the fourth quarter. Stay with us on STSPN.com. We've got a close one right here at Snohomish. Great to have you with us. Schwab tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right things. All right, back to action. Woodenville putting it in the air, and that's going to go short. Oh, well, but there is flat. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like the legs got tied up there. Yeah, I think he's face guarding a little bit there. Yeah. And so Liam Lennon was down there playing tight there in face guard, and we'll see the replay right here. Pressure was on coming in, and then, yeah, look at that. And, it, and again, you saw the player kind of get tied up a little bit for Woodenville. That's Finley Bragg. He goes down. That's going to move the ball up here now. And they get this sorted out. Right. You can face guard, but if there's contact, then look out. And there was definitely, here we go. We see the play again. And yeah, but they're all yeah. It was it was hard. It was really difficult for him to make that play, and then his legs got kind of muffed up a little bit. Oh, and an unsportsmanlike conduct thrown in there for good measure, or for bad measure, however you want to look at it. That's going to move it up another 15 yards. Those are those can be costly, and they can be a momentum changer. Absolutely, because look where Woodville is now. They have moved into the Glacier Peak Service District. They are now in the 34-yard line. And uh, now they have to deal with Todd as the next-door neighbor. 
First down, 10 yards to go. Did I mention how much fun this is? I mean, this is a blast being up here. I just want to say that to you guys. <laughs> it's because it's fun. And here we go. First down, 10 yards to go. It was like the Wildcat there. Yeah, and oh, what a play. That was amazing. So you had Casey Larson in the Wildcat, and then he finds Chase Rudin, and Rudin takes it to the bank. Wow, 34 yards. That is what we're talking about. It really was set up perfectly by Woodenville. You get those two penalties on the uh, pass interference and the unsportsmanlike conduct, puts them in great shape, and in they go. That was really a brilliant play call by, Absolutely. by your guys you know down there. Mike Kluschke the offensive coordinator. High snap, kick on the way. Up and through. Oh boy, 19 to 14. 11.43 to go, fourth quarter. This is a great one. Tell your friends, everybody, get them tuned into SDSPN.com. Even if you're here tonight, have us on so we can try to break more down for you. The home of high school football, SDSPN.com. More coming up. We are back live. It's 19 to 14. Glacier Peak up by just five points now. And Woodenville has made the most of their opportunities. Just scored again on a tremendous snap back to the Wildcat. Casey Larson, who found Chase Rudin, 34 yards and into the end zone for a touchdown. After a couple penalties put the Falcons in great field position. Here we go with the kickoff. That is going to be back and into the end zone. So Glacier Peak will have to move it out. Still won't be bad field position. And they'll bring their offense out. Understand from the Magnolia Bureau Control Center that down in Seattle, this is coming through just fine. We like to check out certain points to make sure that the broadcast is coming through in different areas of the world. And uh, so we check down there, they're fine. And understand too, that in Tokyo, they're getting it quite well. Yes, they are. That would be over there on the Eastern Washington, T-O-K-I-O. Okay, here we go. There it is, a handoff and it. Nice run there. Coming through is Ryan King. Glacier Peak needs to definitely have that momentum. And again, Scott, 11.22 to go. It's anybody's game. You want to hang on to the football, not get picked off down this deep in your own end. But Woodenville's, I'm sure, feeling it. So oh, yeah. Smelling it. Glacier Peak losing by 40 to Lake Stevens last week, and they flip-flop positions in the rankings. That one's going to go straight up the middle. Yeah, the one thing you can say about any team from the King Coast, they play against t tough competition every weekend. And another flag thrown and maybe have an unsportsmanlike. That would be the third unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that we would have had here in this game if that is indeed what it is. Woodville comes in 3-3-0 three and three and zero in league play, 4-4-0 four, four and oh overall. Glacier Peak. Three and one and eight and one. Well, it's going against Woodenville. Not a smart move. Now he's coming out. Woodenville has not led this game. They were down seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Thirteen to seven at halftime. Nineteen to seven at the end of the third quarter, and we're sitting at nineteen fourteen now. Oh, we're across the way at Lake Stevens from our sister station. KRKO, Tall Tom reporting it's 63 to nothing at half as Lake Stevens is blown away Bethel and they'll have the running clock. 
up by 40 in the second half. Yeah. That's a lot of points to put on the scoreboard in one half. That sure is for high school football. Glacier Peak ball carrier that time, Jordan Strittmatter. Well, they got a lot of a lot of tools over here at uh, Glacier Peak. They got a lot of kids that can run They're the ball. They're constantly putting somebody new into action out there. It's the great thing about the RPO. I'm going to correct myself. That was Christian Bonshi. Yeah, it's isn't it nice? Yeah. The old days of one tailback getting 30 carries no longer there. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting to see how the evolution of this sport has gone and how parts of it do cycle back. Oh yeah. Up to the 50 that time. I'll tell you what, if, if Bonchi gets free, Bonchi. they're in trouble because that guy is slippery. Are you on with us right now? I am. Okay. I didn't want to make sure you had full air audience there. <laughs> Sometimes you're just in queue, so go ahead. No, I was just going to say that 26 at He's amazing. Yeah, he scored. I think he's just a junior. 56-yard touchdown earlier, and he is just a junior. 5'10", 170 pounds, and he is fast. Fake on the handoff that time. Lean's going to take it inside the 50, inside the 45, down to inside about the 40, 41-yard line. They're going to back it up just a little bit. That's going to be a first down for Glacier Peak. They'll move the chains, 9.18 to go. This is a big drive. And as long as you can keep making progress and getting those first down, Scott, grind it out. Absolutely. This what uh, find out what you're made of, your team, and kind of uh, now determination. There's been, yeah, there's been different surfaces on this field, but this actual land has seen a lot of grind them out football through the years. Oh, play fake. How about that? Ryan King doesn't get it. It's going to be Lean who hangs on to it. And it looks like he got eight yards on the play and is down to about the 33-yard line. Second down, two yards to go. Still, to start things after getting that first down, Lean stepping it up once again. He's certainly got to be getting strong consideration for our adrenaline fundraising player of the game. And we'll also have to look at the linemen of the game, too. Scott, keep your eyes out for that. Yes. Oh, there's another great run by Lechner. That guy is impressive. Very businesslike out there on the field. 6'2", 230 pounds. And he is a senior. And I tell you, you just, he's one of those guys you see in the team photo and go, that's a D1 player right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you look at him on the right side over there, and yep. you, you just see leadership on that too. You know, certain players, you look at them and go, it's the way they carry themselves on the field. The confidence, yeah, you got to have some cockiness in there, stay away from the arrogance, but the leadership is what stands out. And, and that's what, that's what the uh, scouts and recruiters take a look at. Absolutely. There he is again. To the 10, tripped up. Oh, Got look it. at that. That's athleticism now. Let's work that into the equation. But we do have a flag. Jeff spotted a flag as he went downfield, but whether it's good or not, just watching him do that. We had a block in the back. But Lechner is just fabulous to watch play. It'd be interesting. He didn't do the block in the back. Yeah. He did the run. But somebody got caught. It happens. Oh, there it is right there. Looks like 63. There was actually two players down there. But Baxter Cox, man, well, at least he was in the vicinity. So it's first down. And 15 yards to go as the ball is at the 29-yard line. First and 14, they officially mark it. 7.19 to go now here in the fourth quarter. And again, Glacier Peak, you look up at the clock, and they've worked another couple of minutes off of it. It's been that way all night. Lechner gets the call again. There's 
Good ah. speed, but you really got to give great credit to the tackle made by Jake Kravoshi. Pulls him down from behind, and that is not an easy task. No. Pulling down a guy that's 6'2", 230 pounds, and he, he did it right. Now, Scott, with what we were talking about earlier, are you seeing and, and noticeably seeing less spearing and things along those ways in recent years? I mean, oh, they yeah. put a lot of penalties, you know, oh, yeah. new, new rules in it to try to prevent it. Absolutely. Um, we love this game. So, you know, you want to do what you can to allow it to keep going on and thriving. Yep. Lean goes to the air. That's just going to be out of the reach. Well, we have to adapt, too, because the kids are bigger, faster, and stronger than they've ever been. Yep. And so we have to make sure that we keep the rules within this, you know, keeping these kids safe. To be quite frank and honest with you, you know who we're really guarding against? It's the moms. The yeah, moms, you, moms are they're just very That's the standard, conscious. and not to be, you know, one gender or another, but it, is it, there are, are there some dads, too, that do you see that sometimes? Yeah, I mean, I, I, but mostly the moms are just very concerned about the CTE, the, the stuff that's out there. I mean, you got to do And I don't, homework. you know, I understand where they're coming from, that's for sure. Yeah. But that's usually what you hear. I, I, I would very rarely have heard, you know, because, you know, there's still a lot of that whole macho thing yep. going on. But I understand where they're concerned, and you want them to feel comfortable about things. Yep. And that's tight. And going to be an incomplete. So you're sitting there. We're uh, looking at fourth down, 18 yards to go right now. This is what they end up with there. And there we go. I think, yeah, they do. The, the, like the beanies on there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have Eric Wynn coming in, or Irby Wynn coming in for Glacier Peak. Irby Wynn and a deep man back for Woodenville. That is going to be Casey Larson. He's kind of an all-everything guy. He threw that touchdown out of the Wildcat. Oh, oh wow. Shank, Shank City, and all that does is fire Woodenville up. And the flag is uh, blowing more. We were going to make a mention of that, where the flag is blowing and why Glacier Peak hasn't been going to the air. Yeah, I think it's in Woodenville's favor. Yeah, it's like even that pass down here, you know, that may have played a factor in it to some yeah. degree of that missed pass that went short. So Woodenville has a, a full uh, big uh, wind going in their directions as far as their thinking and their feelings are concerned right now because they score a touchdown here on this drive, and that could be the ball game. And what did we talk about early on, about Glacier Peak, Peak missing that extra point? Yep. On the second touch, it was blocked. Completion. Pass goes out to Carson Ackerman. What he gets, a, what, about five on that one? Five. What second a, down five. One of the things I preach as a coach is that you always said it would be Six big plays in a game. They may not be a play, it might be a penalty or whatever. Now, if you think back on that deal where the kid Lechner scores and he gets called back, that might come back to haunt them. That is ah. true. Another legal procedure. Whistle. Left guard. Going to take it back. And they're going to have the ball set at the 36-yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go after the penalty call. 531 left, and we are in the fourth quarter. Clock is ticking. Ball at the near hash mark. Gibb is going to go right straight up the middle. Chase Rudin. Rudin takes it to the 42-yard line. Six-yard gain, and now it will be third down, four yards to go. This is a big play coming up at this juncture of the game. Third down, four yards to go. Ball is at the 42-yard line. 
Just under five minutes to go and a five point lead for Glacier Peak. Woodenville from Kinko with the ball. Play action, pressure on. He's looking, looking, got him. Right there at midfield, that catch is made by Casey Larson, who's been a big contributor in this game. And he gets it on an eight yard passing play. It's gonna be a first down for Woodenville. Ball's at midfield. First and 10 at the 50 yard line. Three wide left and one to the right. One back next to the quarterback. Play fake, and it's going to that back. Look at this, he's getting some extra running. It's a five yard gain with forward progress. Takes him to the 45 of Glacier Peak and carrying the football that time. Looks like it was Finley Bragg. Taken down at the 45 of Glacier Peak. 4.06 to go now. Field goal isn't gonna do it, you gotta punch it in. Four minutes. Better be on the same page here, because yeah, you gotta get going here now. That clock's gonna keep going down, and you're gonna run out of options. Woodenville has all three timeouts left in the second half. Oh, oh, there it is! There it is! Touchdown, Falcons! 45-yard touchdown play. Can you believe it? As that goes to Carson Ackerman, he's been another great weapon for the Woodenville Falcons. 3.42 to go here in the fourth quarter, and Woodenville has taken their first lead of the game. I think and they're, they're, lining up for, they're lining up for go for two, I think. Yeah, it would make sense because if you can get two right here, you're gonna take it out to a three-point lead, and that would make it a field goal if Glacier Peak did get a field goal to look at tying it if they get these two points right here. Incredible. What a turnaround. Falcons making the most of their opportunities. I think they're calling a timeout. That shank on the punt. I think they would have. Getting Woodenville very good field position. That's a good sized player right there too. Ackerman is 6'3", 190, tall and lean. Now I'm getting it all set out there. Three forty-two on the clock after the score. Trips open. Okay, man in motion to the left side and back again. Going for the two Down to the, the air and oh! No, you got Second it. effort gets it. That was a great hit. But coming through is Casey Larson. Casey Larson makes it 22-19 Woodville. Keep in mind, this is a four and 14. That was a one heck of a hit wow. by Owen Bluff. You gotta give him full credit. He did whatever he could, but Casey Larson as I was just mentioning, it's a big guy, 6'1", 186-pound sophomore. He's a, he, he does a lot. He's of an all-purpose guy. Yeah. And, well, there's a guy you have to look at for the adrenaline fundraising play of the game. We're going to take a break. Be back with more. This isn't over yet. Thanks to Les Schwab tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mine's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. We're right here live and not going anywhere. 2219, Woodenville leading Glacier Peak. 3.42 to go. Fourth quarter action. Can be taken at the two yard line. Making the catch that time oh. is Gabe Russell. Oh. Russell's got a scene. Look out to the 25, 30, 35. Cuts back, 40. Gets a little bit more. And he's out to the 42 yard line. Whoa, that's what you want from the two yard line to the 42 yard line. 40 yards on that return. Gabe Russell, 5'9", 160, and he made every bit of it work for him. Absolutely. 
Oh, what a game. What a game. My uh, stepson's brand at Oregon is called CTG, called Change the Game. That yeah. Might have, that might have just changed the game for them. That is a definite stage setter on what could be a game changer. Riverlina quarterback hands the football off now. That's another really positive run coming through is Ryan King. Ryan King gets almost nine yards on it. And here it comes. Glacier Peak did attempt a field goal earlier of 27 yards, but it was blocked. Got Woodenville on the scoreboard. Handoff again, going to Ryan King. Gonna be a little King's going to be short of that first down, but like about a half yard. So he's at the 44-yard line, 244 to go. And Glacier Peak has all three timeouts remaining. So does Woodenville. Each team does. Third down in a yard. Big play right here. You got to turn it. Turn it. Not going to get it. Not going to get it. Fourth down. This is the play of the night for the Glacier Peak Grizzlies. He suffers a loss of a yard on that. It's now fourth and about a yard and a half. And they need to get that ball clearly to the 30 or 43 yard line as it's going to be set at the 45. And 219 to go as now a timeout has been called. And we'll take a quick timeout as well. This is your home for high school sports worldwide, stspn.com. Taking a deep breath here, Scott. Let me pass the oxygen tank to you. Yeah. yeah. It is fourth and one. And I think Lean got it. No, the ball oh, came loose. Oh. The oh, ball foul. came loose. And he's going to be short even. If he... Yeah. And like where he dropped it. Woodenville's got it, I think. Woodenville has the football. Oh, my. It was knocked away from River Lean. And that is a very tough situation to go through. The officials are talking about it, but we're going to see it right here. He's going to take the snap at the 50 going forward. And right in there, you don't see him with the ball because he was close to having it. And then he goes down. Well, that was it right there. So Glacier Peak has one timeout left after now they're going to call one. It looks like they've got one going. Or was that Woodenville taking the timeout? We see Glacier Peak with just one left and Woodenville with three. That's right. OK, looking at the scoreboard. All right, here it is. First down 10 yards to go at the 45-yard line for Woodenville. All three timeouts remaining. And they'll shoot it up the middle. Carrying the ball that time, Everett Ratliff. We will have the selection of the player of the game, sponsored by Adrenaline Fundraising, and the lineman of the game. That is sponsored by Les Schwab Tires, our presenting sponsor for STSPN.com football. What a night. This is where you got to get a, a lot of sleep the next later on. Yeah. I got to, I got to do, I'm announcing public address for the Metro League volleyball tournament and championship tomorrow. Eight games starting at 8.30. Wow. Got a big one. So we're going to... Well, you, you get an extra night, uh, extra hour of sleep tomorrow night, so that's the Yeah, it, that's it, you know? And it this stuff is so much fun that it just feeds... And speaking of adrenaline, it, it does a lot of fundraising for me. It makes me feel good going in. The game like this is high octane all the way. Second down, seven yards to go. Glacier Peak is out of timeouts. 
They are out of timeouts. Stacked up that time is Chase Rudin. So under two minutes to go now, third down and seven yards to go. Scott, what a game. What a game, for sure. We just crossed nine o'clock, so this one is gonna end pretty close to two hours after it began as that clock continues to wind down. The classic uh, Wesco game. <laughs> this is definitely a classic, and if you're from Woodenville, and a lot of them are here tonight, you are loving the way this one is turning out. Snap coming up. Looks like they have eight yards to go. The spotter's off the mark a little bit. But Woodenville's going to take their first time out. Todd, you want to keep it here? Going to keep it right here. So we've uh, had quite a game. What, 13 first downs for Glacier Peak. Yep. Six for Woodenville. Yep. But they've just made the most of their time here Absolutely. in Snohomish. You know, this just is a perfect example of efficiency. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they were in a position when it was 13 to nothing, and Glacier Peak went for that 27 yard field goal where Glacier Peak was getting close to making the full statement that this is our home field, and you're not going to come in here yep. and win on our turf. And Woodenville blocked the field goal attempt and the next thing you know that taking it to the bank and sure enough they are now up by three points as they've they've just hung tough all night yeah absolutely you just don't want to be interesting what they're going to do here this is an interesting down because you don't really want to do anything crazy no nope. but you want to you know 115 on the clock third and eight ball at the 47 and a loud stadium Look at that guy. At that. He's got the first down, Tyler Jones. That's the cincher right there. We're gonna get two players. You gotta get my headsets here. Okay. Okay, so that's gonna take it to the 42. 107 and the clock ticking, marching down. And I think uh, Casey Larson definitely, and he is from Woodenville, that guy was so versatile tonight. And then Caleb Gross for 52 and 22 of Woodville, 22 and 52. They're gonna get some apparel for their tremendous performance. You see him taking a knee out there. This is a huge win for Woodville. Absolutely. They are not in RPI and Glacier Peak is number five RPI. Yeah. That's, a, that's gonna be interesting to see how they seed them on Sunday at the WIAA office. Have you, you've gone to those before, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Those are a lot of fun. I mean, that is just entertaining and fun to be around. Woodenville's gonna win it. It's just a few more ticks on the clock, like 12 of them. The Woodenville Falcons are gonna upset the Glacier Peak Grizzlies, 22 to 19, in an incredible turnaround performance for Woodenville. Glacier Peak, which was on top, and right there as recently as last week, lost by 40 points to Lake Stevens. They lose by three to Woodenville, and uh, their season ends at eight and two, and is uh, not a good feeling going into the uh, winter months. But uh, still, Glacier Peak always puts a great product on the field. We've seen that year in, year out, since really the inception of this school back in 2008 when Rory Rohrbach was the head coach here. They just keep reloading. And we know they'll be tough in boys and girls basketball like always too. But right now the Woodenville Falcons deserve all the credit in the world because they got it done. I, I, you know, that's one of those things too, Scott, where you're absolutely blown away with yourself. Yeah. You know, it's like coming in and when we talk to these guys once they get up here, you're just gonna ask them, okay, you know, how, what kind of game plan did you have coming in? Yep. And I'll let you fire away some questions too. And, you know, did you anticipate, you know, we had certain junctures of the game where this thing was going? Yeah, I, I just, you know, this is not a knock on the Wesco League, but I just know that I, you know, follow this thing pretty heavily. I kind of think Kinko League is sort of like the SEC 
of uh, high school football. It's a tough league, tough, tough to win, so be consistent, just to always, you know, play hard, and play to the very end. And that's, these teams are, you know, kind of top built built to do. So, well, you um, look at, go ahead. But I also think Glacier Peak probably is last week's game. You know, taking a, a pretty good thumping by uh, a, what sounds looks like a pretty good Lake Stevens team, oh. which is winning 63-70 to nothing at that, you know, third quarter. I mean, how much did that take that out of you? So there's a lot of questions, that, you know, but like I said, six big plays in the game. The big play, I think, was the one that Electra got called back. That was it. That was going to be the game. It was going to yep. be over, and then they got a call back because of a penalty. And so, uh, but hats, yep. off, hats off to the Woodville kids and the, and the program. What a great job. He was referring to that block in the back when yep. Lechner took it in on a beautiful running play, but didn't get it. Now look at the Woodville. Okay, this defines high school football right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. This is what it's all about. Obviously, you certainly see it in the college game, but look at these guys. It looks like they they all, most of them dyed their hair blonde. That's a pretty cool thing. Not yeah. hard to spot them down there. Yeah. It's a tradition at Woodville. That is a tradition at Woodville. That is a cool thing going on right there. So, you know, you were talking about the fierceness and the toughness of Kinko. And in 4A, they got four of the top six teams in the top 25 in RPI. Yep. Skyline, which finished first, is a seven RPI coming into tonight. Eastlake at eight, Mount Side 22, North Creek 25, and Woodville didn't rank in that top 25, and yet they took down number five RPI Glacier Peak. Yep. That says something right there. Absolutely. It's and uh, you know, we know we love Wesco. We're definitely a long time attached to it. But Kinko can be very tough when you go up against them. And we know that also with what Snohomish is dealing with tonight. They were down 40 to 6 last we heard. So, yeah, yeah it's just if you're Glacier Peak, and again, great strong program over there. And uh, they're now in year number 15, which I cannot believe. I mean, that, that time, I mean, it's moved along, right? Absolutely. Yeah, 15th year for Glacier Peak. They opened in the fall of 2008. And I think Snohomish goes back to about 1894, where the stadium is housed here. So Woodenville, they're making their way out, and, and we're going to get uh, guys up. Can we take a quick break there, Todd, and then kind of come back with our our guys are making their way up, so they'll be up here pretty quick. I think we take a couple minute break, we'll be able to get them set. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. This is Witch Doctor requesting immediate contact strike. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters.
All right, we are here live after the game on STSPN.com. I'm Mark Ockett with Scott Lego, and we have our player of the game and also lineman of the game up here. Casey Larson is our player of the game. He's a sophomore, and he did all kinds of great stuff tonight. You threw out of the Wildcat for a yep. touchdown. You Sir. also came through on a great play for the two-point conversion and all kinds of other stuff in between. Great job tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, you played fantastic. Thank you. Just a sophomore. Yes, sir. That's a good feeling yes, for sir. you and for Woodenville. Yep. Um, just going into this one tonight, you, you got a Glacier Peak team that had a tough loss last week to Lake Stevens. RPI of five. You guys didn't have an RPI yet. You're in a very tough Kinko League, but right up there. And four teams in your league are RPI'd. And tell us what you were guys were thinking about with that loss that they suffered last week and what you wanted to do coming into this one? Uh, you know, it wasn't really about their loss. Mm -hmm. It was about the momentum we were carrying off of two wins. Okay. Two big wins. We have all the momentum. We're playing the best football we have all year. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're doing that, it doesn't matter what the other team is. Scott? Well, I just wanted to really congratulate you on that go for two play. That was a heck of an effort. I Thank you. didn't know if you were going to make it. Then you yeah. put your hand down and got back in it. So yep. heck of a play. Heck of Thank a play. You. Appreciate it. And there was, you had to bounce off the attempted stop right there, and it's just like, I'm going in. Yeah. 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 So, uh, okay, sophomore, do you want to play football? I mean, it's still early in your, your career, but do you want to, do you think about playing college? Yeah, for sure. All right. Yep. Any, any place that, you, I know it's early, but that might stand out to you? Uh, I just, right now I'm liking colleges in the area. Yeah. Uh, I'm still exploring colleges that are. You like wearing that W, so this one might oh. might work, or yeah. the sure. other one across the state. For sure, for sure. But uh, no, we wish you the very best of luck. What, what is your interest in school as far as studies are concerned? Um, you know, I like business, and I really like, like my marketing classes. Um, and uh, I still got more years to decide, so. All right. Yep. Well, uh, Casey Larson, just keep developing your brand, and you can put all those skills to lose, Thank right? You. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, great job. He's got a T-shirt. Both of them have T-shirts coming. You. We're going to get and take a break. We get, let's have them hold them out because we're going to post them on. It's stspn.com. stspn.com. He's got it on right there. And so, you guys, this will be archived on stspn.com. And so you will be able to see the game. Hopefully it sounds right as to how we called it. And uh, we had a blast by because this was a barn burner. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to get back to Caleb Gross right after this. He is going to be chosen as our lineman of the game, presented by Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing, which is what Caleb did tonight. Thank we'll you. be back with Thank more you. right here. Thank you. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Lineman of the game, great job tonight. I'm gonna let Scott lead with a question or two here. Yeah. Well, the most important thing is, uh, how do you like uh, playing for Coach Monin? Oh, I love Coach Monin, man. He's my, um, any coach I've ever had, he's my favorite. Yeah. He always brings the intensity he always needs. He's very smart, always, he, I mean, he loves us too. He's hard on us, but we know deep down he loves us. And we love him and he always knows what we need and what to do better. Yeah, he's a great coach and a really good man. And known him for about 20 years, mm -hmm. so. You're lucky to have him. Yeah. Part of a great tradition there. We were talking, and I'm sure it still resonates, the uh, Tuyasa Sopo heritage there at yeah. Woodenville. But then, you know, and that's been a while now, but now you guys are coming through and the, you know, the girls' teams as well. Uh, yeah. the, you, the blonde hair. Yeah. The, uh, we, you know, you, the helmets come off. You don't know it until the helmets come off. And it's a tradition. Tell us yeah. about that. Well, I mean, it started a while, while ago, and, I mean, it just carries on. It's not something the coaches enforce or anything. And it just kind of happens, you know, like – you know, we go into the playoffs, and you come into practice on Monday, and everyone's blonde already. And it's just something just, we all do. And I think one of the truly great things about 
high school, college, especially, you know, high school, are traditions that keep getting passed on. Yeah. And the fact that as the world has its changes, those things continue. Yeah. It's got to feel, and it's bonding, it's too. Yeah, it's bonding. It's team bonding. It's just something we all can look forward to for the next year, you know? The traditions are always great. Yeah. I love them, to, like, to death. I mean, they're awesome. That's fantastic. And then also playing in a very tough Kinko. Yeah. yeah that's it's, that. That it's gets you ready. Lead. It does. It really does. I mean, we had some challenges early on in the season, but, I mean, that's prepared us for now, and we've become a so much better team. We've really bonded, and, we're, I mean, we're playing our best football right now. Fantastic. We're to build on it. What about you? Uh, you looking college-wise at this point? I would think you're a senior. I'm not yeah. playing or not? Or, uh, I don't you know? think I'll be playing, but, I mean, I'm definitely looking um, to go back Midwest. I used to live there. Okay. Uh, looking into marketing as my major. You, you two, uh, you and uh, – yeah, yeah no, Kate, Casey. Larson there would be a great combination. Great, great so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great job out there. I mean, you beat a very good team, yeah, and you guys you. were focused and on top of it, and we just love being a part yeah, of it. So thank thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Keep going. Keep yeah, rolling. Thank you. you know? You bet. Thank you, guys. They'll, thank make you. The, they'll make the choices for who Woodenville and the other 15 teams of the winners this weekend will play. Sunday morning, coaches will be down there at the WIAA. Yeah. Then we'll see exactly how the brackets break out. They get them posted online at WIAA.com, ASAP. And it's just now you're in that first of possibly four weeks. Keep the momentum going. Yeah. Because if, if you believe in yourself, when you believe in yourself like you do, then great things continue to yeah. happen. So we're going to wrap it up. Our final score, 22-19, as Woodenville defeats Glacier Peak in an upset and just an incredible night for football. Scott, always a pleasure. Always. Thank you, Todd. Congratulations. It's just thank you for calling me early or, you know, getting a hold of me earlier this week. We made it happen. And, Coach, thank you. All right. We're going to wrap it up. And uh, so we want to thank everybody involved. Jeff Matson helping us on uh, officiating, spotting uh, Scott Ligo. Also, uh, Sarah Elvig, our camera crew, Mark Ockett thanks, everybody. Winning is for tonight. Sportsmanship is for a lifetime. Hang on, Todd. Remember. Basketball is just around the corner, and nobody at the high school level and pushing the college level does it as well as STSPN.com. Look at what you got coming up, and it is so much fun when we get going here in just a few weeks. I mean, we're talking about three weeks, three and a half weeks, and you're going to see what you see on the screen right now. Look at that. That's a cascade, the energy level, the focus on the athlete, the bands, the cheerleaders. You know, both boys and girls, fully balanced. There you go. That's what we're talking about. It's STSPN.com. Good night.